In this lesson, we'll continue our review of Math Test 9, Section 4. We're now in the last two problems of the problem solving, questions 29 and 30. So let's take a look at 29. So we have a scatter plot above. It shows the federally mandated minimum wage every 10 years between 1940 and 2010. A line of best fit is shown, the equation y equals 0.096x minus 0.488. What does the line of best fit predict about the increase in the minimum wage over the 70 year period? So we have these observations, <clears throat> but remember the line of best fit is sort of a trend line that best represents the data and they give us the equation of the line. And, <clears throat> excuse me, it's just asking what does it predict about the minimum wage? So this is another linear equation applied to a real life scenario. Let's take a look at the choices. Each year between 1940 and 2010, the average increase in the minimum wage was $0.096. So if you look, the x-axis is each year, this is the x, and the minimum wage, and we have between 1940 and 2010, and we're given the slope is 0 0.096. We've talked about this before. Anytime you have a linear equation in slope intercept form, every time the x, whatever it is, goes up by one, the y will increase by the slope. And a looks good, doesn't it? Because each year, that's every x, Every, every year, so when the x increases by 1, we know that the average increase is 0 0.096, which is the slope. This has to be right. So this is not a hard question for 29. We've seen this before. Just remember, if the x goes up by 1, the y would increase by the slope. If the y increases by 1, this is not this problem, but just to review, then the x would increase by the inverse of the slope. So just keep this in concept in mind. Usually it's applied to real life situations like this one. So it's A. And then question 30, we have another scatter plot here. The scatter plot above shows the company's ice cream sales, D in dollars, and the high temperature T in degrees Celsius on 12 different days. A line of best fit for the data is also shown. Which of the following could be the equation of line of best fit? We just have to find the equation of the line. And just to review, you don't have to use, don't use the observations because we're looking for the equation of the actual line. So look for points on the line. So what I mean is don't necessarily pick a point. We want to pick points on the line. So I'm going to start with this one. I know there's a point right there as well. This looks like about 12 on the X and we'll call it like 480. We're just going to use the slope format. And then we don't, another point on the line. So I'm going to pick i pick this one right here. Again, I'm looking at the line. This is 24,880. All right, so now I'm gonna use the slope formula. So the change in Y, I'm just gonna go this way. So it's 880 minus 480 is 400 over 12. This is gonna give us our slope. All right, so 400 divided by 12. So our slope is 33 and a third. So right away, we're down to C and D. And now we just have to find the y-intercept. Now, you want to be careful, I think, especially for number 30. It's not going to be so easy, right? It's the end of the section. But I think some students mistakenly kind of just sketch this out. And they're like, oh, it has to be C because it's somewhere around 300, or right? But you want to pay attention. This x-axis, this is not 0. This is 10. We don't know where 0 is. And so just to ensure. How do you definitively find the y-intercept on a linear equation? Well, we have the slope. Any point on the line will satisfy the equation. We've talked about this before. And so what you can do is simply take the, I'm going to take this point, this 12, 480, and I'm going to plug it into it. All right, so D is going to be 480 equals 33 times 12. And then we, that's how we find our B. All right, and so 33 times 12. And I'm going to subtract this from both sides. So I'm going to add now to 480, and this is what will give us our B. It's 84. And so the answer here is D.